Hey everyone, Nigel and Luke here, and welcome to another edition of Crimes of the Week International. If you're a regular viewer of our Crimes of the Week International series, you might remember that a little earlier this year, we released a couple of compilations of some of the dumbest criminals and crime stories that we'd covered from across the world so far this year. Because so many of you told us that you enjoyed these compilations, we promised that we'd make the videos quarterly so that we could include as many of these bizarre and entertaining cases as possible. Well, we're happy to report that it's that time again, and we're here with our fourth and final installment of the year. One thing to keep in mind is that these segments have not been edited since they appeared in their respective lists, so references to specific days of the week, as well as other small details, may no longer apply. Also, if you enjoy these compilation lists, let us know in the comments section below, and we'll consider continuing with these quarterly videos next year. With that out of the way, let's get to the video. Authorities in the English county of East Sussex say that a 22-year-old thief has been sentenced to jail time this week after he foolishly left his DNA behind at the scene of a burglary. According to reports, it all started during the early morning hours of September 7th when 22-year-old Jake Finn broke into Café Royale in Hastings. Once inside, he rooted around in the business for some time, eventually finding his way into a cash register after a bit of a struggle. After stealing around 300 pounds, he fled the scene and ran off into the night, ostensibly making a clean getaway. Or so it seemed. You see, when police were reviewing the cafe's surveillance footage in the aftermath of the crime, they quickly noticed something strange. The thief had brought a carton of milk with him during the burglary and had put it down while messing around with the cash register. It turned out that in his hurry to leave, he had left the open carton behind. Sure enough, when investigators analyzed the milk carton, they were able to obtain DNA from it that was a match to a known thief, none other than Jake Finn. It turned out that this wasn't the only crime that he had recently bungled either, as police soon charged him for stealing alcohol from a nearby supermarket three days later. This week, Finn was convicted of a total of three charges related to the two crimes and was sentenced to 26 weeks in jail. He was also ordered to pay 300 pounds in compensation to the cafe. Representatives from the Hong Kong police force say that a 37-year-old driver has been arrested on suspicion of drunk driving this week after his sketchy behavior caught the attention of officers responding to the scene of an accident. According to reports, the incident began just before 2.30 a.m. on October 17th when police were called to the scene of a collision in Sim Sa Shui, a well-known entertainment and nightlife district within Hong Kong. It turned out that a 24-year-old motorcyclist had accidentally slammed into a taxi driver while attempting to make a right-hand turn from Austin Road to Park Street. Thankfully, the accident wasn't all that serious, though the 24-year-old was still sent to the hospital to get treatment for some abrasions to his arms and legs. While police were in the middle of investigating the situation, however, something caught their attention. It was a 37-year-old man who had been approaching the crash site slowly in his black Tesla, but upon seeing police, had abruptly pulled over, abandoned his car, and started to hurry away from the area on foot. Understandably, this came off as pretty suspicious, so officers decided to question the man, only to allegedly discover that he reeked of alcohol. Needless to say, he failed the subsequent breathalyzer test and was arrested on suspicion of drunk driving. According to police, if convicted, the 37-year-old could be looking at up to three years in jail, a fine of roughly $3,200 US, and a ban from driving for anywhere from six months to five years. Authorities in the Thai capital of Bangkok say that they received quite the bizarre excuse from an alleged serial thief this week after he was caught with dozens of stolen items, only to place the blame on, quote, his friends in prison. According to reports, the incident began at around 10 p.m. on October 17th, when police conducted a raid at an apartment in the city's Bangna district. 
The operation was in connection with an investigation into a series of high-end robberies that had been carried out in the past few weeks. When police entered the unit in question, they came face-to-face -face with their suspect, 48-year-old Bua Luang Wangkiri. The alleged thief was in possession of more than 60 stolen items, including gold bars, expensive watches, necklaces, diamonds, and other valuables. Altogether, the goods were estimated to be worth more than 10 million baht, or around $262,000 US. That wasn't all, though. Inside the apartment, police also reportedly uncovered plans for at least 10 future robberies, complete with escape routes that Wang Kiri was allegedly preparing to carry out. Despite being caught more or less red-handed, however, Wang Kiri was apparently far from contrite. He admitted to just a single robbery on October 9th, claiming that he had no responsibility for anything else. In fact, he said that his friends in prison were the ones that had planned all of the robberies, and that they had drafted plans for them while he was previously in jail for theft. Understandably, this bizarre explanation did not negate the fact that Wong Kiri had been the one who actually carried out the crimes, and he was promptly arrested and charged. On the bright side, though, it appears that the 48-year-old may be reunited with his friends very soon. As if convicted, authorities say he will be spending another one to five years behind bars. Authorities in the Bangladeshi city of Barishal say that an alleged serial burglar found himself in quite the novel situation last week, when rather than avoiding the police, he was forced to call them for help during the middle of a botched crime. According to reports, the whole thing started in the early morning hours of October 19th, when 40-year-old Yassin Khan broke into a closed grocery store somewhere in the south of the city. Once inside, the so-called professional burglar allegedly began to load up a large bag that he had brought with him with valuables from the store's shelves. Well, it must have been a pretty big bag, or there must have been quite the selection of things to steal, because somehow, time apparently got away from Khan. To his horror, when he finally went to leave the building, he realized that the sun had already come up, and people were now arriving at the store, and it didn't take long for them to figure out what was going on. Pretty soon, a crowd of people had gathered, and let's just say, they weren't too happy with Khan's chosen choice of profession. Deciding he'd rather take his chances with the police than the angry mob, it was at this point that Khan reportedly called the local emergency number. Fortunately for Khan, officers soon arrived at the scene and were able to escort him out of the store before the mob got to him. Unfortunately for Khan, he didn't just get busted for the one burglary. After being taken to a local jail, police realized that he was actually wanted for a number of similar crimes in the area so he was promptly charged for those as well. Apparently, authorities were just as surprised as anyone by the strange turn of events. Speaking about the situation following Khan's arrest, local police chief Assad Uzaman said, quote, I have never seen such an incident in my career. Authorities in the Indian state of West Bengal say that a foolhardy sculptor is in police custody this week after he inflamed religious tensions in his local area in a bid to distract from his poorly performing business. According to reports, the situation started on October 24th when a man in the town of Diamond Harbor, named Prabhat Sadar, started to make a shocking claim to other locals. He said that his workshop had been vandalized the previous night and that more specifically, a large number of idols that he had sculpted of the goddess Kali had been destroyed. If you don't understand why this is such a big deal, allow me to explain. October 24th was Diwali, otherwise known as the Festival of Lights, and it's the biggest and most important holiday of the year in India. The holiday not only has huge religious significance to Hindus, but in Bengal in particular, Part of the celebration has to do with worshipping the goddess Kali. That was what Prabhat had sculpted these idols for. He planned to sell them that day to people taking part in the festivities. So not only was this a significant financial hit to the sculptor, 
It was also wildly disrespectful along religious lines as well. Imagine if someone pillaged a lot full of Christmas trees and used them to destroy the nativity scene at your local church. I don't know if that's a helpful comparison or not, but that's where my mind went. Needless to say, when news broke of the vandalism at Prabhat's workshop, people weren't happy. In fact, things started to get so tense that police were called in to do crowd control to make sure that nothing got out of hand. However, following a two-day investigation, police delivered some surprising news that would turn the tables on the whole situation. You see, thanks to CCTV footage, they discovered that there were no mystery vandals. Prabhat had destroyed the idols himself. After being confronted with this evidence, Prabhat quickly cracked during an interrogation, admitting that this is exactly what had happened. He claimed that he had done it because he was having a hard time selling his idols that year, and he worried that if word spread, his reputation would be permanently ruined. Unfortunately for him at this point, it seems like that's probably going to be the case either way. At the time of this recording, police say that Prabhat remains in police custody, as well as two other people who reportedly helped him fake the crime. Representatives from Switzerland's Geneva Police Department say that they were forced to arrest one of their own this week after an officer reportedly fired his service weapon while drunk inside of a police station, injuring one of his colleagues. According to reports, the incident took place sometime on October 28th inside one of the police's task force offices. The exact circumstances of the situation have not been released, but what we do know is that the unnamed suspect allegedly fired his service weapon a total of seven times while intoxicated. This happened in full view of at least five of the man's fellow officers, one of whom was hit in the foot and required surgery. It's unclear exactly what the suspect's blood alcohol level was at the time, because he reportedly resisted efforts to establish this at the time of his arrest. He has now been charged with endangering the lives of others and causing bodily harm through negligence. Ironically, it said that the accused officer is a member of the police department's drug and alcohol task force. Authorities in the Indonesian province of South Sulawesi say that a gang of teens were quite literally outgunned this week when they allegedly tried to raid a coffee shop without realizing it was full of cops. According to reports, the incident took place shortly after midnight on November 6th at an unidentified cafe in the city of Makassar. The place was apparently quite crowded, but the atmosphere was relaxed until a loud commotion began outside. The noise was a group of nine teenagers who appeared to be trying to make their way inside. They were allegedly armed with bows and arrows, slingshots, and at least one machete. Unbeknownst to the teens, however, they weren't the only ones who were armed. It turned out that at least nine members of the local police force were hanging out at the coffee shop at the time, one of whom happened to be the head of the city's crime investigation unit. Before the suspects could even get past the entrance, Several of the officers had already drawn their weapons and started rushing towards the door. While the group quickly realized they were outmatched, some allegedly still tried to fire arrows at the police. Once they were met with warning shots from the officers, though, they ran. Three of them were apparently caught immediately, while five others were rounded up the following day. At the time of this recording, police say that one suspect is still at large. None of their identities have been released, though the majority of them were apparently minors. Bizarrely, police say that the suspects did not intend on robbing the cafe once they got inside. Supposedly, the violent incident began because of a dispute between the group and the business's parking lot attendant, after which they turned their anger towards the actual cafe. Thankfully, no one was hurt as a result of the incident. Authorities in South Wales say that a 55-year-old man has been arrested and is facing charges this week after he went on an unhinged rampage in a piece of construction equipment and tried to destroy a house. 
According to reports, the incident took place at around 12.20 p.m. on November 8th, when police in the town of Blackwood got a call about a bizarre and terrifying crime. A man was allegedly behind the wheel of a JCB digger and was using it to wreak havoc at a local property. The whole thing apparently happened in front of stunned neighbors and onlookers, most of whom could only sit and watch in disbelief as the event unfolded. It reportedly began when the suspect came down the street in the piece of heavy machinery. After driving up and down the road roughly three times, he then started heading towards a semi-detached house. He proceeded to ram the property a number of times before using the vehicle's bucket to flip a Ford Fiesta that was on the driveway up on its side and push it into the house as well. A couple of people who witnessed the insane incident yelled for the suspect to stop, with one even slamming their hands on the side of the digger's cabin. The 55-year-old man reportedly ignored this, though, and kept right on going. Finally, after destroying a retaining wall, leaving a massive crack in the structure of the house, and significantly damaging the Ford Fiesta and another car, the suspect was apparently satisfied and drove away. He was later arrested by police at a McDonald's two miles away while he was halfway through eating a meal. To top it all off, authorities say that he was drunk. While neither the man's identity nor his motives have been confirmed at the time of this recording, multiple witnesses have stated that the 55-year-old lived at the property where this week's incident took place until quite recently. It's said that he and his wife went through a bitter breakup and that this might have been his warped way of getting revenge. It's unclear exactly how much damage was done as a result of the destructive attack, though some sources estimate repairs could cost upwards of 50,000 pounds or about $58,000. Currently, the suspect remains in custody and has been charged with drink driving and criminal damage. Police and healthcare officials in the Indonesian province of West Java say that they are trying to set the record straight this week after a 40-year-old man allegedly attempted a harebrained scheme to fake his own death accidentally sparking a viral internet rumor in the process. According to reports, the situation began on November 11th when the 40-year-old suspect, identified only by the initials U.S., called for an ambulance with a casket to come to the home of him and his wife in South Jakarta. When the vehicle arrived, the couple allegedly told the driver that they needed to go pick up the body of a deceased family member in Bogor Regency. The driver claims that the husband and wife both looked healthy when they started the journey, but that somewhere along the way, they requested a short stop at a highway rest area. However, when they went to leave, only U.S.'s wife appeared to get back in the vehicle. That's when she directed him to drive to a different address, a health clinic in Rankabungur district. Upon their arrival at the clinic, the driver finally realized where U.S. had been. He had reportedly snuck into the casket in the back of the ambulance and was now pretending to be dead. The driver would later tell police that he had a pretty good idea as to why this was the case. During the ambulance ride, U.S.'s wife apparently complained at length about the fact that they were in serious debt and that recently, many people had been trying to collect the money from them that they were owed. It's now believed that U.S. and his wife came up with the whole scheme to try and fake his death. As you might imagine, just like the ambulance driver, workers at the clinic were not fooled by U.S.'s bizarre acting and refused to pronounce him dead as his wife allegedly requested. Sometime after this, likely when U.S. figured out that the scheme was not working, he miraculously started to come back to life. He still apparently put on quite a show, though, and was transferred to Bogor General Hospital just to make absolutely sure that nothing was actually wrong with him. Well physically speaking anyway. While authorities say that they are still in the early stages of their investigation and have put off questioning U.S. and his wife until he is discharged from the hospital, in the meantime, they've got another issue to deal with. It turns out that footage of U.S. springing back to life in the casket made its way onto social media, and after it did, quickly went viral. Many now seem to be under the mistaken impression that the 40-year-old genuinely died and came back to life, a rumor which police and health officials are currently trying to quash. 
The hospital where U.S. was admitted even put out a statement clarifying that at no point was he ever declared dead. But, you know, it's the internet, so all we can say is, good luck trying to get that one sorted out. At the time of this recording, the situation is still developing, though police say that if convicted of trying to deliberately mislead authorities, U.S. and his wife could each be looking at up to a year in prison. Representatives from Japan's Tokyo Metropolitan Police Department say that a man has been arrested this week after he bizarrely and recklessly set off fireworks in the middle of a crowded intersection. According to reports, the incident took place at around 10 p.m. on November 14th when the suspect, identified only as a man in his 30s, arrived at Shibuya Ward's famous Scramble Crossing. After waiting for the light to turn green for pedestrian traffic on all four sides, the man reportedly lit up a pair of fireworks, holding one in each hand, before walking out into the middle of the intersection. Footage captured of the incident showed charges of colorful light firing off wildly every couple of seconds. While most people tried to simply ignore the suspect and get on with their business, this apparently became difficult when the man started turning the lit fireworks sideways causing them to fire horizontally instead of up in the air. At least one of the blasts narrowly missed the faces and heads of two people. While this arguably would have been a reckless thing to do at any intersection, it was an extra dangerous thing to do at this particular location. For those unfamiliar, Shibuya Crossing is packed pretty much all hours of the day and night. It's famously been labeled the world's busiest intersection, with an estimated 2.4 million people traveling through it each day, and an average of about 2,500 to 3,000 people going through per crossing. Needless to say, police were not impressed by the stunt, and the man was placed under arrest immediately afterwards. While the man's motives remain somewhat unclear, multiple local sources speculated that he was simply angry at the world. Apparently, he shouted some stuff into a megaphone after the fireworks went out, though unlike those, he aimed the megaphone at the sky, making his words completely incomprehensible. Police, meanwhile, say that he told them in an interview following his arrest that he, quote, wanted to stand out. At the time of this recording, it's unclear if the man is facing any charges. Representatives from Japan's Tokyo Metropolitan Police say that a 27-year-old gig worker's next side hustle might be in a jailhouse cafeteria after he was arrested for allegedly smearing food on the door of a customer after becoming disgruntled while on the job. According to reports, it all started on October 12th when 27-year-old Takuma Ichikawa made a food delivery to an apartment building in Tokyo's Toshima Ward while working as an Uber Eats courier. The order was completed, and apparently on Ichikawa's end, everything seemed fine, until a little later that day, when he noticed something on his app. The customer at the Toshima apartment, identified only as a woman in her 20s, had given him a low rating. While reports don't mention why the woman wasn't satisfied with her order, so we can't speak to the validity of her problem, Regardless, it's safe to say that people just being jerks sometimes is unfortunately a predictable hazard of this kind of job. Apparently, this was not the way that Ichikawa saw it, though, and he decided he would make it known that he took the situation personally. According to police, after receiving the low rating, the 27-year-old returned to the woman's apartment at least two times and smeared curry all over her apartment door. They allegedly know this because Ichikawa was caught by surveillance cameras at the building entering the premises twice on October 12th and once on October 13th. It took police a little time to positively identify Ichikawa, but he was reportedly arrested on November 14th. So far, the 27-year-old has allegedly remained silent during questioning, and it's unclear what charges he could be facing. Whether police throw the book at Ichikawa or not, though, one commenter on a local news site summed up the situation this way. It's definitely a lesson on how not to curry favor with your customers.
Authorities in the Thai province of Nakhonsi Tamarat say that they are searching for an equally bumbling and disturbing criminal this week after he allegedly broke into the home of a terrified female resident and asked her for some money as well as a roll in the hay. According to reports, the incident began at around 2 a.m. on November 21st when a 29-year-old teacher named Sasatorn de Takru was awoken to strange sounds coming from her kitchen in Tungyai district. When she went to investigate, she was startled to see that an unknown man had entered through the back door of her home, which she had accidentally left unlocked that night before going to bed. Terrifyingly, before she could call for help, the man covered her mouth with one of his hands. The man promised Sassatorn that if she just stayed quiet, there was nothing to be worried about. After all, he said, he was just there to borrow 500 baht, the equivalent of about $14 US. I mean, what a relief, right? The strange man in your house in the middle of the night is just here for a temporary loan. To her immense credit, Sassatorn reportedly managed to remain calm, explaining that she didn't have cash on her, but that she could transfer the money from an app on her phone. Apparently not realizing that he was essentially handing over his banking information, the thief agreed to the transfer and the money was sent. That's when things allegedly got even stranger. In perhaps the greatest misreading of an interaction between two human beings ever, once the transaction was complete, the thief reportedly asked Sassatorn if she was interested in making love. After all, nothing sets the mood like an impromptu home invasion. Once again, amazingly, Sassatorn kept her cool and told the thief no and that he needed to leave, to which he agreed. Before going on his way though, the man reportedly decided to share what he apparently thought were some final words of wisdom. He told Sassatorn not to forget to lock her door before going to sleep and that living alone was dangerous. He also told her not to move to a different house because he totally intended on paying back the 500 baht. Then, even though he had originally come in through the back door, he allegedly made the bizarre choice to climb out of Sassatorn's home through the bathroom ceiling. He apparently cut himself multiple times while doing this leaving blood all over the bathroom. While police say that they so far have not been able to track down the unknown man, they're fairly certain that between the DNA evidence he left at the scene and his banking information, that they'll be able to identify him soon. The situation is still under investigation. Authorities in the English county of West Sussex say that a 46-year-old woman was recently sentenced to prison time after she made a series of poor choices one morning this year that can perhaps best be described as those of a reckless idiot. According to reports, the situation began sometime on the morning of July 2nd when 46-year-old Monique Moss was visiting a friend's place in the town of Crawley. For whatever reason, when she left, she decided to help herself to her friend's car keys, then started up the woman's Ford Focus and drove off. Police say at the time, she had previously been disqualified from driving. As if to prove once and for all that removing her driving privileges was the correct course of action, police say that Moss didn't make it very far once on the road and smashed right into a nearby bus stop. That's when she reportedly decided to go for the trifecta of awful decision-making running away from the scene on foot, even though the stolen car had spun sideways and was now sitting in the middle of the road. Luckily, the driver behind Moss had their vehicle equipped with a dash cam, which captured the entire thing. The 46-year-old was quickly identified and was arrested shortly after. On October 28th, Moss pleaded guilty to dangerous driving, theft of a vehicle, driving while disqualified, being in charge of a vehicle which was left in dangerous circumstances, failing to report a traffic collision, and driving while uninsured. She was sentenced to two years in prison and was disqualified from driving for a further four. Authorities in Japan's Fukuoka Prefecture say that they have arrested a 41-year-old man this week after he pulled an equally bizarre and ironic stunt in the middle of a local police station. 
According to reports, the incident began on the evening of November 28th at a Fukuoka prefectural police station somewhere in the city of Kitakyushu. Just after 7 p.m. that night, officers and support staff were going about their usual business when out of nowhere, a startling commotion was heard coming from just inside the entrance. It turned out that a man, identified only as a 41-year-old office worker, had rode his motorcycle into the middle of the station's lobby and was now loudly revving his engine. Upon coming face to face with one of the officers, the 41-year-old reportedly revealed the strange intentions behind his disruptive and unannounced visit. Over the still blaring engine, he yelled, quote, I'm here to talk about bad driving. After quickly arresting the motorcycle rider for unlawful entry, the police obliged him in a conversation. Seemingly lacking any sense of irony, the man allegedly explained that he wanted them to crack down on what he called rude driving. More specifically, he said that he had been cut off by another driver earlier that day and that he also wasn't a fan of tailgating. Oh yeah, and he'd been having some problems with people at work as well. It's not clear why he threw that last bit in there, but hey, it's not like he was making a lot of sense before that anyway. That trend apparently continued when police asked him why he chose to ride the motorcycle inside. He replied, quote, I knew there was a parking lot in the police station, but I rode up to the lobby. Yeah, so, more of a description than an explanation, but it appears that's all police were going to get. As for the man's fate, reports don't really mention, though some have speculated that at the very least, he may be looking at a suspended license. Authorities in the Australian state of Victoria say that they are looking for an unknown man this week behind a brazen and dangerous attempted theft after he tried to steal copper from a power station and ended up starting a fire in the process. According to reports, the incident took place sometime on November 17th when the unknown male suspect broke into the South Bank power station on Faulkner Street. Once inside, he allegedly attempted to steal $1,000 worth of copper from an electrical panel using only a wrench. Unfortunately for the suspect, things didn't go as planned. Within just a short time of messing around, smoke started billowing from the panel and sparks started flying. Though he walked away empty-handed, police say he was lucky to walk away at all. Just seconds later, the entire area where he had just been caught on fire after the sparks triggered a series of small explosions inside the power station. Understandably, police aren't too impressed with the would-be copper thief. They aren't the only ones, though. Workers at the electric company say that with the rising price of copper, opportunistic thieves have become an extreme nuisance and something that they now have to watch out for on a daily basis. At the time of this recording, police are still trying to identify the culprit from the South Bank power station. This week, they released images taken from CCTV cameras in the area, which captured the suspect walking away from the crime scene as well as his orange Holden Captiva. Anyone who recognizes the man or his vehicle is encouraged to reach out to police. Before we wrap up, we'd like to take a minute to thank our amazing supporters over on Patreon. As many of you are aware, our situation on YouTube always seems to be a bit uncertain, but our patrons help to ensure that we can continue to make content like this long term without having to worry as much about what surprises might be thrown our way. Plus, patrons also get access to four additional stories per week for each of our Crimes of the Week and Crimes of the Week International videos. If you'd like to help support the channel directly, head over to patreon.com slash crimezone to join. You can also find that link in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and take care. <laughs>